G'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How, and in this video, we're going to run through a quick little how-to on how to flood solder your Anderson connectors. Let's get started. Now there's a few different ways that you can connect your connector to the wire itself. If you check this video up here, you'll see where we've used a full hydraulic crimper to be able to crimp the cable on, and that's what this guy here uh, looks like after that's been done. The other way though is to flood solder, and that's essentially by filling the uh, connector up with solder itself, heating it up, and then putting your wire in so it gives a nice solid connection. And that's what we're gonna run through now. Now you're not gonna need too much in the way of tools to get this job done. You are obviously gonna need some solder. It's not gonna go all that great if you don't have some of this. And then you're gonna need a way to melt said solder. And we've got two different options. We have the trusty soldering iron. This guy I've had for years, but she still works a treat. The other way is with one of these portable flamers. Now this one's probably a little bit overkill, being that it's quite big. Uh, and you can get those little tiny ones, and I don't have one of those with me at the moment, so this will have to do. You're then gonna need, obviously, a whole bunch of connectors and your Anderson plugs here. And last of all, you're going to need something to hold or clamp your connector down as you heat it up. So some old alligator clips are perfect for the job because they can sit nice on the table like so and clamp in without too much drama. So method one is going to be using the soldering iron. I've had this on for about 10 minutes and it is hot as blazes, so it's ready to roll. So once your cable is prepped and ready to roll, you wanna grab one of your connectors, grab your chompers, and essentially what you wanna do is have it facing this way up, uh, like a little little cup, I guess. You wanna grab it with the jaws so it sits in there just like that. Because what we're gonna do is we're going to heat up the little outside of the unit itself here and then feed in some solder. Once you've got this in place, what you wanna do is just heat it up. Have your solder ready to roll and just sort of give it a test. It should start melting in there once it is hot enough. And there we go. So we've hit the point where we're starting to melt some solder. Now it's really important that you don't fill it all the way to the top. You're probably looking for about halfway. Which is about there. You wanna keep it nice and warm. Get your cable. And then you're literally just popping it in there pushing it down, removing your heat. Giving it a minute there until it cools off. So we've left this for a couple of minutes. We can touch it now without it scalding our faces off. Now this uh, is on quite nice and tight and I'm pulling on that quite a lot. And as you can see, it's not going anywhere. So you can see that this cabling is probably a little bit small for the size of that connector. So if you were using something like this, you'd probably put some shrink wrap over the top there just to fully waterproof the joint. So that's one way. The next way we're going to do the other end and we are going to use the flamer. So similar idea here as well. You wanna get your cable ready to roll, which we do. You wanna set up using the same chompers and you can use a vise as well if you've got one handy. You wanna set that up so that it is nice and secure in the jaws there. Grab your solder and get that ready because this process goes a whole lot quicker than the soldering iron. So you wanna get a good run ready to roll and drop in there. If you basically just get everything all ready to, ready to roll. And the next step is we wanna apply heat directly to the connector itself. And same story, then we're just dropping in the solder and it melts as it warms up, fills up the container, and once we're a bit over halfway, we leave a bit of heat in there and drop in our wire. Once it's hot enough there, we should be able to drop in our wire just like that. Same story as last time, just want to leave it 
until it cools. All right, so we've left this for a good five minutes. Like I said earlier, this guy here is absolute overkill for this. Uh, you probably don't want to use one of these big guys. It pumps out way, way too much heat. But hey, it gets the job done. I reckon you can get ones that are probably about a quarter the size of this, and they are perfect. They're a little little sort of handheld job, so you can just get in there and just give it a bit of heat on site. But like I said earlier, that's the only one I have. But it does the job. So we've cooled this off and we can take it out of the jaws of death there. We can give it a good tug and it's not going anywhere as you can see. Same story as the other side. You can make sure you put on some, some heat shrink over the top just to give it that extra layer of protection and protect the solder inside as well from corrosion, etc. But other than that, you're good to go. The only other thing you need to do is connect these into your Anderson plug. And like we talked about in the other video on how to do this, pretty straightforward. Look for the little lump here, the little kink there, as you can see, that needs to pop in over the top like that of these little tabs. So this sort of slots in over the top of that and the tabs hold it up and hold it in there. And sometimes you'll find, especially if you've got a smaller cable, it won't want to go in there all that easily. So just check that you've got the lump there. If you do, get a little um, screwdriver, especially a flathead, and what you want to do is help it along by just pushing it in on the housing itself until it clicks just like that. And as you can see, we're in over the top here, and that is going to give us a great connection, and it's not going to pull back out either. So as you can see there, that's solid as. You grab the other side, which obviously wouldn't be the same cable like this one, but just for argument's sake, same thing, we want to look for the little lump. The lump wants to sit over the top of our tab. We'll see if this guy wants to go in any easier. And it looks like we are. And push in until, you can see there, it's almost in. So you want to push that in until it clicks. Over the top there, just like that. So once they're in there like that, they are a solid unit. They do not pull out. If you ever have Anderson plugs that do pull out, it's because they haven't been installed properly and it's most likely they're not over the little lip here or whoever's uh, installed them into the connectors themselves have used something that's inferior to the, the proper way of doing it. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope that was helpful in showing you how to flood solder your Anderson plug connectors. It does provide a great connection, as you can see. I hope it was helpful. If it is, be sure to share with your mates, subscribe to the channel itself, and I hope you have an awesome day. We'll see you in the next one. See ya.